good morning guys. Uh, just wanted to make a video to give you guys an update on the Turbo 460 build. So uh, I had knee surgery about a month ago, so I've been recovering from that. It's the reason why I haven't been putting anything out, but um, I'm working on it. Uh, as you can see, I got the cylinder heads on. Uh, I'm using MLS head gaskets. I'll throw some pictures in of the, the pistons and stuff. But like after having the knee surgery and trying to get this thing together, I wasn't able to really film while I was doing it. I mean, I, I could have, but it was difficult. Um, so uh, right now I got just a distributor in there just to plug the hole, but I'll be going to coil unplug and converting the distributor over to a um, cam crank sensor type deal. I'll, I'll do more on that later. Um, engine block is painted right now. Heads are on. Uh, I, so I had to do all new valve guides. These heads only had about 10,000 miles on them and they were trashed. So we got all new valve guides, um, new seals, had to replace all the intake valves. They had a lot of wear on the stems. Uh, the exhaust valves were perfectly fine. I was able to reuse those. Um, so all new stainless steel intake valves, um, and, uh, MLS head gaskets from Kometic, uh, pistons or icon. Uh, 60 over, so 4.420 bore. Uh, I gapped the piston rings quite a bit, uh, essentially for well over a thousand horsepower. Uh, I copied Steve Alvey's, uh, essentially Steve Alvey's build for the most, or for some of it, uh, but he's been helping me a ton on this with his build. He's got a turbo 460 and the truck named Martha. It's an F100. Uh, he also owns amp uh, wiring, uh, and he's a badass fabricator so the dude's been helping me a ton um anyway so i'm just gonna do a quick overview of where we're at right now and i need to set up the I, i'm going to roller rockers uh so i need to set up the geometry and make sure that they are shimmed correctly so this is a pedestal mount pedestal mount uh rocker and i need to make sure that the that the the, the height is correct for proper stem alignment and then make sure my push rods are going to be correct uh, length i'm hoping that i don't have to change them but there was definitely an issue with the way it was assembled before uh, it had stock stamp steel rockers and i'm wondering the machine shop is wondering if maybe the lift on the cam was just a little bit too much for those rockers and that's what that's what was causing um the problems that i was having but this paint turned out real nice um, I'm definitely a fan of this color. It's, and it's, it's super nice, like easy to use paint, but it's this engine enamel. Uh, they call it like Ford, old Ford blue or something like that. Um, I didn't have a sticker on it. It's good stuff. So we'll be doing, um, the rockers today, hoping that the push rods are the right length. And then if, if they, if I need longer ones, I'll be ordering those, and that's pretty much the last step. Uh, I gapped the rings uh, for boost, like I said, uh, Icon Pistons. The compression ratio will be in the, or it's actually, it's nine and a half to one. It was 9.76 to one before, um, based on the compression ratio calculator that I did, um, and now it's gonna be around nine and a half. Uh, I just couldn't find it was either stepping up quite a bit in compression with flat tops, or this was the next smallest dish that I could find on the pistons to get the compression ratio close um, to what it was. So this engine with these heads at 9.76 to one was about 420 horsepower, 550-ish foot-pound of torque uh, without the turbo. So, and then it definitely likes boost, but all right, guys, let's check these, set these rockers up. And guys, here's the, uh, the roller rockers that I went with here. Scorpion, um, made in America. They're specifically designed for pedestal mount. Um, and I ordered up some shims to make get things dialed here. So we're going to be throwing these guys on. They're pretty damn nice.
clean them up first. All right, guys. So the push rods uh, that I have are not going to work. Um, I'll give you a better look here. So these uh, these are the rockers I'm using. I showed them a little bit ago, but uh, Scorpion 1.73 uh, F is for Ford. So I have my adjustable push rod checker on down here, and I have that set up to. Uh, I initially set it to my push rod length that I had, which is eight and a half inches. Um, so this is the intake valve here. And if you take a look, a lot of slop, a lot of slop. So that push rod's definitely too short. Uh, so I adjusted this guy out to uh, 8.6 and nice and tight, uh, adjusted this. Pedestal mount down to zero lash and then torqued and I got exactly half a turn to till I hit 20 foot pounds. So this is perfect. So 8.6 is my push rod length, 8.6 inches. Uh, so I'll have to order up a set of push rods and then I'll have these eight and a half that I'll probably post for sale since they're basically brand new. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and check every single cylinder exhaust and intake just to make sure I have sh the shims if they need to be shimmed at all. Um, but I want to make sure that the, the 8.6 inches is, is correct um, on everything. And I think we'll be good to go. So I'll be back in a minute. Hey guys, it's the next day. Uh, I ran into some problems last night. Um, I pretty much kept me up all night. So here's the deal. So I got the checker springs. Uh, I had to install checker springs on these valves to to test um, for my pattern. You can kind of see it there in the middle there, but so essentially I had to shim the intake valve 20 thousandths to get my pattern on the roll, roller rocker centered. And then the uh, exhaust valve required no shim. It was pretty much dialed, but I had to change the push rod lengths after shimming. So we settled in at 8.65 inches um, and that gives me the best pattern on the valves with the proper torque and lifter preload for hydraulic lifter preload. So I ordered up my lifters, um, but here's the problem. So while I was <clears throat> taking these valves off, since the heads, the, the, the heads are on the block, uh, I use my spark plug, um, compression tester tube, and I run that in the spark plug hole. And then we add air shop air to the cylinder to keep the valves up. And then I remove the springs. So when I did that, I could see or hear and feel a, a decent amount of air coming out this exhaust valve. So, uh, so the exhaust valve is, is not sealing all the way. So I went through and I checked each, and this is about hundred PSI. I went through and checked each cylinder and all the other ones are good except for this number five cylinder exhaust valve it it's leaking so i spun the valve and tried to mess with it a little bit and stick my finger in there and i ran a camera in to see if there was anything that i could find that was um maybe like hung up in there like from like grinding compound or something like that right so it's clean as far as i can tell there's nothing on it uh and i called the machine shop they weren't happy about it but also thought that maybe if i ran it it would kind of seed in and maybe not be as much leak with a few heat cycles, but I really don't want to take that risk. I don't want to put the engine in and then have this, this valve leaking and then have to pull the head off in the engine and all that. And it's the easiest to do it right now because I don't have the intake manifold on. So I'm going to pull the head. Worst case scenario, I ruined my MOS head gasket. Uh, I copper sprayed these, even though people say you don't have to, or you shouldn't with this type of head gasket, but I did it anyways, because I was a little bit concerned about the smoothness of the finish on the head and the Glock. Uh, anyways, so people, I mean, it's like 50-50 whether or not people say you should copper spray it or not. I went with it. I was going to give it a shot. We'll see what happens. The head gaskets are about 100 bucks a piece. Um, I'm going to maybe reuse it if I can when I pull the head off to find out. But that's where we're at right now. So the plan is to pull the head off. Check that valve, see if I can see anything in it. Maybe there's a crack or something caught in there that I couldn't tell or, uh, or couldn't see with my camera. So that's the plan now. It's a little bit of delay. 
it kept me up last night thinking about like whether or not I wanted to run it or take the chance or not. I just don't want to. I, I, I would rather spend the money now, replace the head gasket and just do it now. So that's, that's the plan. Um, I'll update you guys once I get the head off. All right, guys, I got the head off. <clears throat> it looks, it doesn't look bad. I think it might be actually leaking around the seat though. So here's the, um, that copper spray on the head gasket. I think I'm going to be able to reuse this head gasket. It never went through any heat cycles and it's, um, I mean, I think it's good. I'll just give it a wipe and it looks like all this tension spots have sprung back, but I don't know. I might not take the risk. We'll see. Um, so here's the, the valve. Nothing on it. I can give you guys, if you can see that. No, it's not gonna work. So the seat looks good. Um, there was definitely nothing in there, but maybe it's leaking around the edge. I don't know. It's definitely leaking. So I'm probably gonna take it back to my machine shop. Um, and see if they can test it and go over it, maybe give it a new grind or something. So um, <clears throat> I'll keep you guys posted though. And I think I'm probably gonna have to end things off here. Um, so take the head of the machine shop, have them take a look at it. He said when he initially, he tested each valve for vacuum and it was fine then. Um, I don't know what the standard is. It's like, you know, what vacuum level is pass fail. Um, but that amount of air leaking past is, I mean, I could feel it with my finger. And if I put my finger over the portion that was leaking, I could hear it like blowing and pressure. Like, I mean, it, it's like a hole in a tire and you put your finger over the, over the hole. It, it's leaking quite a bit. Um, definitely not acceptable for me. So hopefully he can get this fixed if they have to replace the valve or the seat. I don't care. Just do it. Um, I need it. I need it done and done correctly. So, all right, guys, uh, please like and subscribe and I'll keep posting. Thanks. I'm feeling